I just wanted to show everybody my mask, my Florida State mask. You want to wear it in case you know? Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Since we have to make masks, I thought I might as well, you know, make a statement, right? You know? Uh, let me mention, though, as we move forward, uh, I wanted to just say a word as the praise team leads us, that uh, the conference has required that we do not sing at the present time. What I did at the earliest service is I just spoke the words because they're on the screen, and it really touched my heart. So we're going to ask that this Sunday, uh, and until we have further directions, that you would just speak the words or hum or sing in your heart as we work through our worship service. Can we all stand? Good morning. Thank you for being up and ready. Please join us for our first song this morning. I know you can't sing along with us, but as Pastor Eddie said, you can sing in your heart, you can raise your hands in worship, you can move, you can dance, you can clap, whatever you want to do to worship the Lord. If it was all about religion, what to do, what to say, what to wear on Sunday, all about perfection, black and white, wrong or right, never gray, but well, I never make it, I never be good enough. I tried to walk the line, pray that I'd find something that I knew was real, began to realize the harder I tried, the colder I'd start to feel until the moment. The second I met your love, then I threw my hands up, worries down. I remember when he showed me how to break up with my doubt. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. No strings attached when you save my soul. Want you to know the God I know. That's where it starts, not where it ends. Let freedom in. More than just a story in the sky, where it right, he's alive in every moment. And now that I know this love, I can throw my hands up, worries down. I remember when he showed me how to break up with my doubt. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. showed me how to break up with my doubt once i was lost but now i'm found no strings attached when he saved my soul wants you to know the god i know oh you god i know oh the god i know what was i waiting for i came alive when i let go all i had was a broken heart and he held me in his Can we all say amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that are gathered here today. Father, our first Sunday in 13 Sundays have an in-person worship. Lord, we're so glad for the folks that are able to gather here, as well as all of those that are with us right now online. May the Holy Spirit flow through the sanctuary, flow into everyone's hearts wherever they are. Guide us, lead us, direct us as only you can. 
And we will always give you the praise and glory. And may all of God's people say, you may be seated. So good to see all of you gathered here in worship and in celebration. I mentioned in prayer, this is our first in-person worship in 13 weeks. Now, some of you were with us a little over a month ago, but the conference told us they wanted us to wait till this particular Sunday for us to gather together. So we had a service, a traditional service at uh, the 9 o'clock hour, and then uh, this one today at 11 o'clock on Father's Day. So what better Sunday to celebrate our Heavenly Father than all of us to be gathered here and those of you that are watching us online, that you're experiencing the Lord. The Bible says, where two or more are gathered, that there I am. That is church. So wherever it is. But it feels good to be back here. And I'm so glad uh, to have all of you with us. So good to have the Frechette family back uh, with us. Praise the Lord. Uh, let me mention, too, I see a couple of young folks here. You're welcome to stay in the sanctuary for the worship service. But there is a Sunday school class uh, that uh, is about to start, and it's in the administrative wing. So if any of you get bored or want to move next door, you young folks, they've got uh, it set up for, for all of you if you would like to. But you're more than welcome to stay in here uh, as well. I've got a list of announcements about the openings of our church, so I'm going to share those with you now. Normally, I don't make the announcements, but it's important that I do this uh, so that I can go through each of the steps. Uh, so if you'll just bear with me, I'll try to take this kind of slow uh, so that I can explain each area that we have. The masks are required by the Florida Annual Conference, and the intention is there are people that cannot be in worship unless they know that others are wearing masks around them. And I know there's uh, quite a bit of different ideas about wearing masks, so thank you for your patience, and uh, thank you for your willingness uh, to do that for us. We're also continuing to practice the social distancing, um, so when we have our praise music here in a few minutes again, you know, we open the altar, so you're more than welcome to come forward. We have our prayer chairpersons, uh, like we did about a month ago again. They'll be up here to pray for you, but not to draw close. They'll just lift their hand in your direction. And we pray that if you come up, if someone is kneeling, that you would just, you know, make sure you're a good distance from them as you kneel in prayer. We have folks that are cleaning the altars and the pews between, after, and before the services. So it's well taken care of. We've got an amazing team that are doing this. We mentioned a moment ago as well that we're not to do congregational singing uh, at the present time. Um, and again, I know that there's different opinions on that, um, but thank you for following suit there with that. Uh, we did vote in our worship committee to have the words on the screen so that you can say them or you can sing in your heart, as Cindy said, close your eyes and hum, and you can experience the Lord in a, in a beautiful way. And as I said at the traditional service, I just spoke the words when I looked on the screen and uh, really uh, spoke to my heart and touched me as I worshiped. Uh, we are beginning this week a very soft opening uh, the Bible studies will be starting back on Tuesday, praise God. Uh, 10 o'clock Tuesday morning, uh, Barbara Keller will meet in the Friendship Hall with the Bible study. And then Tuesday night at 6 o'clock in the sanctuary, uh, Reverend uh, Stephen Sly is going to start his Bible study back. Uh, and the reason that we've moved his to the sanctuary is we're going to start back our administrative meetings and to have more room, we're going to meet in the Friendship Hall. So this Tuesday night at 6 o'clock, the Finance Committee meeting is meeting. Some of you are on that committee. We'll be there at 6 o'clock and we will be in the Friendship Hall. And again, the Bible study will be in here. The grieving class resumes uh, July the 7th at 5 p.m. in our chapel. Um, the office opens tomorrow morning. Uh, there will be reduced hours. It will be open from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 9 a.m. in the morning to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And the office staff, if you come in, they will speak to you through the window. You know, there's a foyer there and there's a window that they have and they can give you an air hug. You know, that's about the best we can offer at the present time. Our scouting programs and AA programs have started back. We praise the Lord uh, for that. The scouts were camping the other night and um, that storm came in. I was so glad they ended up going inside uh, to protect themselves. That was very wise, of course. But they've also uh, taken on once a month to clear out our prayer garden and to take care of it. 
And I would encourage you, if you haven't walked that prayer garden recently, it is a beautiful opportunity for you just by yourself to experience the Lord. And you can see some of the new additions the Scouts have offered for us. Second Life Thrift Store opens this Friday, June the 26th. Uh, from 10 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon. These are reduced hours as well. They are requiring masks. They will open uh, the same hours Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturdays. And they cannot take right now any donations. As you can imagine, that built up during this uh, time. And so they can't uh, go forward. Tina? Oh, is that right? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Excellent. So it will be open tomorrow morning, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Correct? Do I have the days correct? Thank you, Tina, very, very much. Thank you again for your patience, dear folks. Um, I know this is uh, asking a lot, um, but the conference, remember we're a connectional church and the conference has set certain guidelines. Um, Our prayers are with the other churches. Some of them have been open a number of weeks for in-person worship. Some are outside, like uh, First Baptist here, the pavilion um, that they are blessed to have. Um, Other churches have not opened yet, and I want you to know that we have been given permission through the connection uh, to open today, Um, but the uh, majority of the Methodist churches in the state of Florida, the big majority, are not opening yet and uh, will not for a while. And so uh, we are very blessed, and as you know, you can, we're taking a number of precautions to protect everybody the best that we can. And uh, so it's a wonderful experience to see all of you out here and just to worship the Lord Jesus Christ together. Can we all say amen? Now, let me continue. I'm going to go right into the children's story. The children that are next door, I've already taped the message. uh, And so they've got it next door. Uh, And so since you're in here and you're big adults with youthful hearts, I'm going to share it with you as well, okay? So you've got to put your hands up in the air and say with me, long, long, long time ago in a faraway place on the Wiflacoochee River. Reverend Bullywink, Bullfrogs, anybody remember what a bullfrog says? Ribbit, ribbit, I can hear you through your uh, muffled uh, voices there. Bullywink Bullfrog was preaching on Ezekiel chapter 37 out of the Bible. Matter of fact, same passage we're going to look at today for all of us gathered in here. And in that passage, Bullywink said that the prophet Ezekiel had a vision, and before his very eyes, a human body formed from bones to tendons to muscles to skin, everything right before him, but it had no air, it did not breathe, it was not alive, and then God breathed on that individual and it came alive. And Bullywink Bullfrog said, since it's Father's Day, of course, he said, and fathers are so important and every family should have a good mommy and a good daddy and work together. He said, all of the body coming together that Ezekiel's vision had, he said, is kind of like the body of Christ. The Bible teaches us the body of Christ build up together. And of course, daddies are very much a part of that as well. And they all fit together as we worship the Lord. And then Bullywink, and you can't sing along with me right now, but Bullywink began to sing, and the kids love this. I know they'll enjoy when they watch this next door. The foot bone connected to the ankle bone, ankle bone connected to the leg bone, leg bone connected to the hip bone, hip bone connected to the back bone, back bone connected to the shoulder bone, shoulder bone connected to the neck bone, neck bone connected to the head bone. Here's the best part. Oh, hear the word of the Lord. Put your fingers up. Them bones, them bones gonna rise again. Them bones, them bones gonna rise again them bones and bones gonna rise again oh hear the word of the lord can you put your heads together (laughs) when i've done that with the kids they just have enjoyed that so much especially harmony preschool so much that uh before we had to stop having chapel services when i would come in i always would sing the bullywink song they looked at me and they said can we do the bone song can we do the bone song they just like that we are the family of god this is father's day and so even in the sermon you're going to see where we're celebrating fathers today i'm going to ask miss angie if she'll come at this time to read our holy scriptures angie good morning our verses this morning are from ezekiel 37 7 through 10 so i prophesied as i was commanded and as i was prophesying there was a noise a rattling sound and the bones came together bone to bone I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. 
prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breathe from the four winds and breath into the, breathe into this slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Before Bobby comes up to pray for us this morning, then we go into our worship, I have a few prayer requests. Again, just we praise the Lord for all you dads that are here today and all dads that are watching the service online. We hope this is a marvelous day uh, for each and every one of you. I just received a text from my son-in-law, uh, David. Many of you know David, and he just was very appreciative of uh, Father's Day and relating to me. And I told him what a blessing it is for me back to him as well, raising our grandson and just what a blessing and a good father that he is. I hope that you have a wonderful Father's Day. Those that are in the hospital, Peter Holtz, I saw him this last week. They are, some hospitals are allowing the pastors in and some are not. And uh, this particular one did uh, to begin with. The second time I went, they would not allow me in. But Peter needs your prayers. He's very confused. His wife, Barbara Holtz. Many of you know Peter and Barbara Holtz. Please keep them in your prayers. Emilio Celani has been in the hospital as well. And um, he had some internal bleeding. He is at home right now and has fallen a number of times. He's just there with his uh, wife, Flo. She's had to call the... Uh, paramedics to come just to get him up. The uh, son is flying in this week, and uh, he had to be tested for COVID before he can go into a rehab. Test came back yesterday, negative, so this week they will be moving him into a rehab uh, in Inverness, Florida. And uh, so again, his name is Emilio. I know many of you may not know him. They come to the 11 o'clock service, Emilio Solani. Mike uh, Mascala Wall, this is Missy's husband, uh, is at Shan's Hospital, and we're not able to see him right now. And he has had some really difficult times. Uh, uh, we call him just Mike Wall, but it's Mike Muscala Wall, and Missy is his wife. Carl Carlberg, many of you know Carl. We did his wife's funeral just a month ago. Carl had a defibrillator put in uh, this week, and he's doing very well. And he has moved in with one of his daughters. And uh, so if you can keep them in your prayers, I know all of them uh, would appreciate that very much. And then this morning at the uh, 9 o'clock service, John Taylor was uh, offering security for us, and Sandy fell. His wife, uh, she was at home with John's daughter, Jody, and she had a bad fall uh, while John was here. So I just talked to John, and he said she's okay. There was no cuts, but a bad bruise. And uh, so please keep them in your prayers. And those of you that know John, you might want to call him this afternoon and just reach out to him. There's been a lot going on in our world. I'm going to lift that up in the sermon, as you know, dealing with this pandemic, as well as the racial issues and the political issues. So many things going on. And so we just have a lot to pray about. And so I'm going to ask at this time, I guess, Bobby, if you can come and lead us to the Lord, and then we'll go into our prayer and praise time uh, for worship. Thank you, Pastor. As Pastor mentioned, as all the chaos around the world, as our church members are home, watching from afar, those that are in hospitals, nursing homes, they're still our church family. And we know that God still has his hands on them. So with that being said, we'll go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, once again, we, we come humbly but so bold. Father, we come with our heads bowed. Father, our hearts are open. Father, we're looking to receive you today. Father, those that Pastor Eddie has lifted up, oh, Father, we know that they are in your care. Father, strengthen them where they're weak. Father, make them stronger once again. Father, those that are caring for them, Father, give them the knowledge and the understanding to apply the services, Father, that they need. Father, today our children are here. Father, we are gathered once again. Father, you allow us to come as a church, oh, as a church family, lifting up your holy name. And what a Sunday to say, thank you, Father, for all that you've done. Oh, Father, we thank you in advance that all that you're going to do, 
Father, we say happy Father's Day to, to you. Father, we thank you for your mercy, for your grace. Father, for your kindness. Oh, Father, for your understanding. Oh, Father, without you, where will we be? Father, we would be lost without you. Thank you for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way once again. Oh, Father, you didn't have to, but you did. Father, you allow us to come and say thank you. Oh, for your love that you have shared upon us this far. Father, we ask that you look upon this nation. Father, as chaos is, is all around us. Father, the divisions that we see, but we know only you can. You can bring us back together once again. Oh, Father, we trust and believe that you can do this for us. Father, you've done it before. Father, this pandemic will be a thing of the past. Your words say old things would fade away and all things would become new. Oh, Father, we love you today. Father, we're giving you the honor and the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And may all of God's children say, amen. We ask that you would just rise with us, join in from your prospective places. Thank you.
Father, there's nothing like holy water on our skin. Father, let it cleanse us from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. Father, make us brand new once again. Oh, Father, we give you the praise and the glory, oh, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we breathe the fresh air in our lungs. Father, henceforth and forever. And may all of God's people say, Amen. Amen, amen and amen. You may be seated. Let's thank our praise team and sound folks for putting together a beautiful worship service. I know you're clapping at home as well. There is, um, they have been doing this for weeks and weeks. If you were up here during the week when they're practicing and working, and uh, Carlos is with us, uh, and some others at times that are not here today, and those working in the sound booth, and the, the band, the singers, it just put, there's a whole lot of work to develop this, and then taping the services as we've been doing in Facebook Live, that's just been an interesting journey. So uh, we, I just praise the Lord for all of you. I want to take a moment before we begin the message today uh, to remind you that our offering plates are at the exit door, so you can't get out with seeing an offering plate. Uh, there is an offering plate next door. We didn't have any overflow at uh, the early service. I don't know if anybody's even over there in the Friendship Hall, but as the weeks go by, if the uh, attendance builds where we need to, to make sure everybody has safe distancing and we need to move folks there, we can uh, put it up on the screen, live stream it right next door, which we did not have that ability a number of months ago, but we do now, so we're very excited for that for other reasons as well, as you can imagine, as ministry uh, continues to unfold. So we're not passing the offering plate, so I uh, mentioned that they're at the um, uh, back there, and if you have a prayer request, of course, as always, you can drop that in the offering plate, and we'll get those to Patty, who's our prayer chairperson, to put online. And uh, we've been working quite a bit to get all those prayers for a lot of folks praying uh, for each other. We're going to leave the um, uh, services right now with the traditional at 9 o'clock and the contemporary at 11. That will be discussed in the worship committee in the near future, but uh, this is just something we've done um, to, for the present time. And so uh, you let us know what your thoughts are about that. And uh, we're just trying to reach as many people and do the right thing the best that we can. And so we just appreciate, again, your patience very much. And we give God praise for those of you online that have been given to us, uh, mailing in your checks. Many of you may have done the same thing. So thank you so much. And we give praise in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And may all of God's people say... 
Amen. The message this morning comes from Ezekiel, as you heard Angie read a few moments ago. Now, we're doing a series, probably many of you have been following along the last couple of weeks, but maybe some of you have not had that opportunity. But we decided for the summer months to spend time talking about different individuals in the Old Testament, the prophets, the judges, and the kings. Now, each Sunday, there's going to be a different one. Next week will be Daniel. This week is Ezekiel. And these are great men and women of the Old Testament. And you really don't have enough time in one Sunday uh, to talk about them uh, in depth. So I've just prayed about it. I've got verses throughout the uh, summer months for each of these individuals that kind of focuses on a particular topic about them. There's much more to their lives uh, when you get the opportunity as you're reading uh, through the Bible. Now, I do want to mention right up front that Ezekiel is one of the major prophets. And if you were with us last week, we mentioned that the major prophets, there's four in the Old Testament, and they're only called that because of the length of the literary work in the Old Testament. And then the final 12 prophets that are listed in the Old Testament all the way, the last one being Malachi, and then there was 400 years of silence before the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the stories of Jesus. Um, they're called minor prophets, those final 12, just simply because that the, what they have written is smaller than the four major prophets. Now, Ezekiel was written about the 6th century B.C., and uh, he is a contemporary to Daniel that we'll talk about next week. Ezekiel is one of the apocalyptic uh, prophets. He sees visions in the sky and signs and wonders and angels and demons and all kinds of sights and sounds. And, and there's some great ones throughout there uh, in his teaching. The one we're focusing on today almost sounds like a creature feature film when this body forms right in front of him in this vision, and we'll get into that in just a few moments here. But he is a powerful prophet, a lot like Revelation, last book of the New Testament. That's an apocalyptic passage as well, where you have symbols that refer to times present and times in the future as well. Now, also today, as we mentioned earlier, it's Father's Day. So I wanted to tie in the message as I was preparing uh, with Ezekiel, and the focus of this passage is that we need to be strong and that we need to come alive. And that's what happened to this army that's in his midst of, of bodies that form right before his very eyes. And so I believe uh, when I'm thinking about my earthly father, now many of you, um, you may have, have some wonderful stories of your earthly father. Maybe you don't have wonderful stories, but our heavenly father, there's all kinds of great stories about him. Amen? Amen. Wonderful stories, and, and we all should have had a great daddy, you know, but, but we're in a fallen world, and that doesn't happen all the time. But when you find a great daddy, you want to lift that up. So I've got a couple stories in the sermon today uh, to talk about uh, my earthly father, just because it's Father's Day, and relate it to this passage of Scripture that we have before us this morning. Now, when I think of my earthly dad, the thing that stands out most to me was his strength and his firmness. You know, he just, uh, he stood on what he believed, whether it was right or wrong or whether I agreed or disagreed with it. He stood his ground and I learned a lot from that. Now, there's a one particular story uh, in his life that, in, that involved me when I was a little boy. And I know that a number of you have heard this before, but dad was pastor in a little country church. He was uh, went late in life into the ministry. He had been a meat cutter for 25 plus years. And so later in life, and, and he was a tough, you know, cut of a guy back years gone by. So even when he got saved and experienced God, he was very rough around the edges. That was just his life, the way he grew up and who he was. And, uh, but a wonderful dad. I mean, just a good father uh, for me and my two sisters. But in the church we had, one of the churches he pastored when I was a little boy, um, there was a terrible situation that we found out about. And there was, and like I said, some of you have heard the story, um, there was adultery going on in the church with two of the leaders of the church. And I remember my dad going to that couple and trying to reason with them, you know, and I was probably seven or eight years old. And I, I remember watching that and trying, you know, to learn from that um, because it was just a small country church and everybody knew everything. So I could see what was going on. And he tried to reason with them and uh, it just didn't, it did not go. 
And so I remember when it came to our uh, yearly meeting, it's just like we have here in the Methodist Church now, our charge conference, where you set the positions. Dad said, with the district superintendent right there, he said that these two individuals cannot continue to be leaders of the church. And that caused an uproar. And uh, one of the um, persons from the church said, well, who gives you that authority, preacher? And uh, Dad, at the time, he held up the Bible in one hand. And he held up the Book of Discipline of the Methodist Church. And I want you to know the Book of Discipline is a good book. Uh, We don't always follow suit with that in uh, in our denomination, but it is a good book. And so Dad said, I have the authority. Well, that caused disarray, as you can imagine. And uh, a following church service, even though the head usher, that was one of the positions the gentleman had, was removed from him, he took up the offering anyway. Now, I know we're not doing an offering today, but he took up the offering, and um, he passed it around, and his wife and his girlfriend in the back of the church were giggling. Uh, you can imagine how sick and crazy this sounds, but just, you know. And um, so he took up the offering, and then he brought it up to the altar table, this holy place, and he slammed it on the altar table, you know. Ooh, doesn't that get you? <laughs> you know? And, uh, and then Daddy got up to preach. And uh, Daddy said, I've changed my sermon. And uh, he said, you know, he said, I just got to, the Lord's wanting me to say, preach on a different topic than what I had planned. And he said, today, I'm going to preach on adultery in the church. And bam. And I just, you know, that'll also make you go, (gasps) you know, but that was Daddy. You know, God had picked him, I believe, to be in that church at that time. And what happened? Can I say revival broke out, praise God, because of daddy's sternness and firmness right then and there? No, the church split completely in half. And as a little boy, I mean, my nerves were just shot and my family's, it was terrible, beyond terrible, beyond terrible. 30 years passed, 30 years passed. We lost connections of that church, you know, over all the years. And an individual from that church came to visit us. I came to visit Daddy. I was grown then. And I went over to their house, Dad's house to see him. I hadn't seen him in 30 years. And they began talking about that situation, which had split the church. And they said, Preacher, did you hear about the revival? And he said, he didn't know anything about it because we lost all connection there. And they said, years later, a youth revival took place in that church. And a lot of teenagers gave their life to Jesus for the very first time. And she looked, the, the wife looked at dad, and I remember this, sitting there watching her. She looked at dad and she said, that would have never happened, never happened if you hadn't stood on the Bible, the Word of God. Can you say amen? So Father's Day, that's a great story, right? I mean, I just I love that, you know, and, and, it, and it caused all kinds of turmoil and struggle and, and nerves. I mean, it was just, it was terrible at the time, but that taught me something about standing firm and coming alive and being who God wants you to be. And this passage of Scripture in Ezekiel is all about that. So my challenge for you in a few moments here when we wrap up the sermon is to be strong in the presence of God. Can you all say Amen. Well, let's work through the ABCs here this morning. The A is the army of God. Now, Ezekiel has had this vision, as I mentioned earlier, and before his very eyes, he's seeing these human bodies form, starting off with the bones and then the tendons and then the uh, tissue and then the skin. Whoa, that's just crazy, isn't it? You know, and he's seeing all this, and it's not just one, it's a vast army, the A of our ABCs. And so as I begin to study that, I begin to question God what, that, what I can say about that for our congregation today. And what I heard in my spirit was that God is desiring even an army today, an army of his children today to stand up for what we believe in, to stand up for, for life and liberty and truth, to be the men and women that God has called us to be. That's why it's so good for those of you that are able to gather here today. My wife and I were talking the other night, and, and she said, she's here now. She said to me, she said, it, it, you know, she said, in the midst of the worst crisis the world has ever seen, she said, this is when the church needs to be the church. You know, that she was trying to express about how we need to come together and be together the best of our ability. Because if we don't need each other now, then when do we need each other? Amen? You know? And when do we need each other? And so it's important for us where two or three are gathered in my name. So you that are at home, you are the church of Jesus Christ. You that are here in the sanctuary, you are the church of Jesus Christ. Now, the army of God is called to move, to move. 
Now, to move, you've got to listen to whoever's giving you direction. And that's what's going to lead us into our challenge today. Somebody, a coach, somebody's got to be giving us direction to move. And if you're in the army, the military, your sergeant, I'll say, is telling you to move, you do that. Again, being Father's Day, I've got to go back to one of Daddy's stories when he was a little boy. Does anybody here remember when all the men used to wear hats? Y'all remember that? How's this look? How's that look? Doesn't that look good? Doesn't that look good? It's a, this is a Stetson, too. This is one of them expensive hats, you know. Daddy said that uh, one day when he was uh, a boy, and, and we're talking about many years ago, they were working on the farm, he and his brother Thomas, and they were out in the back 40. And he said that uh, as they were back there at the barn, all of a sudden they saw this hat stick out of the door and said, Boys! And then closed the door like that. And Daddy said that him and Thomas said, looked at each other and they said, Was that, was that Pa? Was that Pa? Because they had a little brother. And the little brother was mischievous. Anybody have a little mischievous brother? <laughs> little mischievous brother. And they thought, that, that could have been Harry. And they said, if that was Harry, we're going to, you know. But if it was Pa, we better... <laughs> We better go there. And they took off running, and they got back there. Oh, my goodness gracious. And guess what? It was little Harry <laughs> that had made the difference. And I'll end the story for Harry right there. You can imagine what happened to Harry. And uh, Harry's in heaven now. Not because of that. I don't want to say it that way. But uh, I did Uncle Harry's services a couple years ago up in Atlanta. You know, And I know they're all enjoying the, those old stories and new stories in heaven with our Lord Jesus Christ. Can you all say amen? I mean, they, they are. They are. The idea of the story, though, is they went running. Why? Because Pa, they thought it was Pa, called. Now, the coach is calling our church, I believe in this summer months, to move, to move, to move forward. Now, we're going to have to see where the Lord is telling us to move. But I think, dear friends, we're on the brink of revival. Revival's already here in our midst because in this pandemic, dear friends, it is bringing people to their knees. It's bringing people to pray that have never prayed before. It is calling us to be the people that God wants us to be, to reach out and bring people to Christ, to reach out and touch them. Oh my goodness, in the Old Testament, there's another great story of Joshua. And if you remember, he was the follower of Moses. We preached on him a number of weeks ago. And Joshua is leading the people of God into the promised land. And they got to the Jordan River, but he wanted it to split like the Red Sea, like Moses did. But it wouldn't split. And God made it clear to him. He said, Joshua, step into the water. Move forward. You need to move. And as soon as they stepped into the water, the waters parted and they went across on dry ground. God is calling us, calling some of you individually, some situation in your life to move. There's something going on in your life and you need to make some kind of move and quit being stagnant. You need to let the Lord lead you and guide you. Can you say amen? All right, we'll come back to that in a minute. The B of our ABCs, the breath of God. God breathed. Now, I love the way this works in the story, in the passage of Scripture. God speaks to Ezekiel, and he said, Ezekiel, and he calls him son of man. He said, Ezekiel, son of man, he said, can these, this body move? You know, can it, is it alive? Now remember, it's that vast army of all those folks there, but they're just standing there. You know, it's, they're like zombies. They're just standing there. And he said, can they, can they, can they come alive? Can they? And, and uh, Ezekiel just says, Lord, you're God. You know if they can or not. And then what does God say? Do you remember the passage of Scripture Angie read a moment ago? You prophesy. You speak the blessing of God. You speak the word of God over them, and they will come alive. And he breathed the breath, the pneuma. In the Greek, it's called the pneuma, the spirit, the breath of God. And that's the same spirit that came upon all the disciples at Pentecost, the same spirit that Jesus breathed on them in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, in the resurrection. It is the presence of God. It is life that was given to them. God is calling us to experience him. You know, I love the quadrilateral in our church. That's the four statements of our faith in the Methodist tradition. Scripture first, tradition, reason, and experience. Scripture must always come first. Tradition, reason, and then your individual experiences. And God is calling us to experience Him and to move forward and to be the people that He's called us to be. The founder of the Methodist church, his biggest fear in those early years, and, I, and I've read this out of his journals, was that the church that was forming before his very eyes, these bodies, like Ezekiel's vision, that early days of the Methodist movement, that the church would become a, a, an army, a vast army 
but had no spirit in it. Same thing as this vision. And I'm not sure if that's not happened in many places in our connection. Their bodies, they're there. They look pretty. They look good. They look strong. They look reasonable. But there's no life. There's no, there's no power of God. There's no deepness. Is that you today? Is that you today? God wants to pour out His Spirit on you. That'll be one of our challenges. Now, the C of our ABCs, they come alive. When He prophesies over them and just speaks the Word of God is what prophecy means. Speaking the Word of God over them, breathing the breath of God over them, all of those bodies come alive there in front of Him, that vast army, and they're ready to do His bidding, you know, in the vision that He has. And, of course, He's going to do God's bidding. They come alive. One of the greatest stories of coming alive in the Bible is in the book of Acts, chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came. We spoke on that just a few weeks ago as well. The church started back then. Holy Spirit was poured out. People People were filled with the power of Almighty God, and there was a sign of that. 3,000 were saved that very first day, but more than that, Peter, Peter's life was changed. Peter had been forgiven. He now received the forgiveness that God gave him, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. For in the very next chapter, Acts chapter 3, he's going to the church the next day, the temple, and as he's going to the temple there, the Spirit speaks to him. He sees a man that's begging. And he said to the man that's begging, who, who, who he stops and looks at, and he thinks he's going to give me some money. And he said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Arise and walk. And he lifts him up. He's filled with power. He's filled with excitement. Peter is willing to give his life for the Lord Jesus Christ, willing to die. Tradition says that when he gave his life, he was martyred. He was actually crucified upside down because he did not want to be crucified right side up as his Lord and Savior was. His life was radically changed. He came alive. That's what God wants to do in your heart and in my heart today. He wants to fill us with life again. There's a sadness, a deep sadness on America today, a deep sadness sadness on the globe today. God wants to remind us that we're just here for a little while. Whatever takes us out of here, whether it's COVID, whether it's a hurricane, whether it's a car accident, whether it's just getting old. Friends, we're only here for a short amount of years. We live for eternity. We are spiritual beings. We've got to remember that. That's got to be the focus of the church of Jesus Christ. Amen? All righty. Let me rest a minute. The challenge. The Lord laid on my heart last couple of months to always give a challenge. And most of the time, it's on the ABC. So bear with me. The A. Do you remember what it was? The army of God. And that we're to move. You know, I, I used to love, uh, when I was a boy, to watch baseball. Some of you may be baseball fans. Some of you may hate baseball. So I apologize for that. But whoever is our speaker of the day has to share some of their experiences, so just bear with me on that level as well. And I loved watching the Cincinnati Reds, the big red machine of the 1970s. I just, I loved them so much. Second baseman Joe Morgan, when he got up to bat, he'd always, he'd do this. He'd always do this. Some of you remember that? Always. So you knew, you knew what he was going to do. And he, he usually got a hit, you know, or they'd walk him, he'd get to first base, and he always stole second. He always stole second. I mean, it was just like an automatic, you know, automatic. But very rarely did he steal third base. And when he did, though, wow, when he did. Now, let me mention our challenge today. God's calling us to move, right? Well, God is the Holy Spirit, and he is the coach on third base telling Joe Morgan when to come. So you've got to find the coach, the Holy Spirit, to know when to come, to know when to run, to, to meet him when he's calling you, okay? That's our first challenge. We've got to look at that coach. Holy Spirit is the coach. And we've got to be willing when he's ready for us to run, to move, then we're ready to go, right? We're ready to go. Most of us as Christians in, in this room, I'm sure, maybe all of us are. Many of you watching online, you love the Lord. You, you, maybe you've been a Christian 20, 30, 40, 50 years. I don't know. But if there's anybody that's watching right now, and even in the sanctuary here, that has never Ask Jesus to come into their life. You're never going to get around the bases. You, you, you're never going to get home. So if that's you right now, I'm just going to ask you. I did this in the earlier service as well. Just right now, if that's you, just ask Jesus. Just say, Jesus, please, if you're for real, forgive me of my sins. Come in my life. I'd like to have what the pastor is talking about. And he'll do it. Can you say amen? He'll do that. If that's you, do that. 
Now, for the teaching side of this, most of us, we're in the middle of the game. We're in the middle of our lives. We're, 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 we're beaten down with this pandemic, the racial issues, the political issues. I'm so tired of the different sides of the political regimen, aren't you? I mean, just uh, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You know, there's so much going on. You all know that very much, you know. And so here we are in the middle of life. It's like we're Joe Morgan on second base, you know, and what, we've, just, we've, been, we've been too long on the base. The Holy Spirit is ready for us to come, all right? I believe that with all my heart. So we got to connect with the Holy Spirit. How do we do that? How do we do that? Well, that'll take us to the B of our challenge. Does anybody remember what the B is? The breath, the breath of God. God wants to breathe on you again. This is part of the challenge for you to ask the Holy Spirit to fill you again. You see, so many people, when I talk to them about their faith, they say, yeah, I accepted the Lord 20 years ago, and Spirit filled me, and it was the best day of my life, you know? Has the Spirit filled you since then? Well, I, it happened 20 years ago. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. He's with me all the time. I'm asking you to ask the coach if it's time to get to third base, if it's time to run. I'm asking you, I'm challenging you, I believe God's challenging you, to ask the Holy Spirit to fill you again, to give you a second blessing. When I was a little boy, Daddy... Go back, I'll give you one more daddy's stories, okay, since Father's Day. Daddy, I got into trouble. I don't know why. I, 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 I never got in trouble. I was just an, an angel of a child. Can somebody say amen? You know that. You know, I, I, and I don't even remember what I did, you know. And so, but daddy had a switch. Do you remember them old days? You know, that'd be abuse today, I'm sure, you know. But he had a switch, and he had my hand. And, <laughs> and he just, you know, I mean, it, you can just picture it, can't you? You know, and I'm just down there, just a little tight, you know, and I'm looking up at him and I'm going, daddy, 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 you know, just running like that. And he finally, he stopped. I remember this. And he just, he looked at me and said, what? And I knew then I had him, you know, at least he didn't, you know, he was thinking. He was just, you know, and maybe if I could make him laugh, if I could make anything, you know, but I had nothing to say. I was guilty as charged. <laughs> I just, you know, whatever it was, I don't even remember what it was, you know, I just, but I looked up at him and I just said, I don't want a whooping. <laughs> I don't want a whooping, you know. And, the, and, and Daddy says he didn't whoop me. It all goes blank after that. I don't know. I told him I sat down with him before he went to heaven, you know, a number of times we talk over the years. And I said, you know, I think you tore out, tore me up. He said, no, son, no, I didn't. He said, I started laughing, I didn't. I said, well, then how come I don't remember it? <laughs> I said, I just went blank, you know. And he said, I just, be, he gave me the idea that maybe the ecstasy, the fun, you know, just, I don't know, I don't know what happened. I'll find out we get to heaven and God will tell us what really took place there, amen, you know. The idea is I wanted a second chance. Holy Spirit wants to give you a second chance. Wants to give you a second blessing. Would I have gotten that if I hadn't said, Daddy, 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 please, please, getting his attention? You need to get the Holy Spirit's attention. He does love you. He cares for you. But you've been asleep on second base for years. You got to call up and say, here I am to Joe Morgan. You're ready to steal third base and let the Holy Spirit tell you to come. And when he comes, you run as fast as you can. Can you say amen? You run as fast as as you can to him. 1775, Patrick Henry, famous statesman, talked to the Virginia, in Virginia, at St. John's Church, spoke to them, and he said the famous statement, give me liberty or give me death. You all know it, see. And it was powerful. And it gave the strength to our emerging nation to be strong, to come alive, to stand on their principles, to be willing to give their life if it took that, willing to give their life if it took that for liberty, for liberty. That was a prophetic word spoken over that congregation like I'm speaking over you today. And you know how powerful that was? You know who was sitting in that group? Future presidents, Thomas Jefferson. George Washington, all receiving that, getting the motivation to be who God called them to be. God is calling you to be a vast army, to listen to the Holy Spirit, 
to ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to see when he's ready for you and us as a group to move, that we move together for the kingdom of God and that we come alive and stand firm, stand firm on what he has called us to be and to reach out to others. And then in closing, going to ask the praise team and band to come on back up. And then in closing, I said, Lord, I need, what does it mean for me at this time that I can give to the church to come alive, the sea of our ABCs? And this is what the Lord spoke to me. It's been hard, too. He said, pray for those you disagree with. Pray for those that you believe are wrong. Forgive them, Eddie. You believe they're wrong. Forgive them. Oh, my goodness. In this crazy day and age, with all of the things going on we just mentioned about, you may have crazy things going on in your individual life on top of all the stuff around the world. But the Lord is saying to, I believe, all of us now, to come alive is to pray for those that we disagree with. Those that we don't like. Those that we're thinking, I can't believe you said that. That we are to pray for them. Jesus said, that's what I did. He said, if you want the Holy Spirit to come alive in you, Eddie, then you got to be me to them. Don't back down on what you believe, but forgive them and love them. And remember my words on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they don't even know what they're doing. Oh, my friends, when that love gets a hold of us and we're looking for the Holy Spirit to guide us home and we look at the vast army of our church and nothing can stand in our way, no pandemic, no racial struggle, no political move, no individual heartache, no marital spat, no family trauma, no financial difficulty. None of that can stand when we come alive to Christ. Where are you, church? I challenge you, come alive. Let's stand together. Lord Jesus, thank you so much. Just bless us now. As we respond to the worship today, if there's anyone here, Lord, that wants to come and kneel or stand at the altar, or dear friends, in the spirit of prayer, make the place where you're standing your commitment to be a vast army for God, your commitment to ask the Lord once again to fill you once again, and then to come alive, come alive in Jesus' name.
Oh, Father God, as we come to the closing of this service, Father, we ask that you keep a, a head of a protection round and about us. Father, as we enter this chaotic world, Father, we know with your mercy and your grace, Father, you can mend things back together once again. Father, we say thank you once again for allowing us to be in your presence. Father, walk a little closer, walk with thee. Father, so one day we will enter the kingdom. There will be no more division among us. Father, we wouldn't be judged by the color of our skin. Father, all of your children will come together once again and say, Father, we thank you for all that you've done. Father, we know today that you've brought us this far, not to leave us, but, Father, to bring us together once again to say amen to the word. Father, as we go today, we ask that you keep a head of protection around and about us, henceforth and forever. And may all of God's people say, Amen. See you next week. Blessings. <laughs>